The storm broke upon us so suddenly that numbers of soldiers and officers who leaped from their tents or lazy siestas on the grass were stricken in their rising with mortal wounds and died, some with cigars clamped between their teeth, some with pieces of food in their fingers. One battle in the American Civil War that wasn't supposed to take place was the Battle of Gettysburg. This battle, while not planned by either side, became one of the defining battles in the American Civil War. The Battle of Gettysburg was fought on July 1st through July 3rd, 1863 in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The Union Army's commander at Gettysburg was General George G. Meade. He commanded an army of over 100,000 troops strong at the start of the battle. The Confederate Army's commander was General Robert E. Lee. He commanded an army of 75,000 troops at the start of the battle. The fighting started on July 1st when one of the Confederate divisions in A.P. Hill's command approached Gettysburg in search of supplies, only to find that two Union cavalry brigades had already arrived the previous day. Confederate troops, even though outnumbered, were able to drive the Union forces back. Even though the Confederates drove the Union forces back, Commander Ewell did not press the attack. He thought the Union position was too strong. Due to Ewell's inaction, the Union forces were able to reinforce their position and prepare for a second day of fighting at Gettysburg. On the second day of fighting, the Union Army's position from Culp's Hill to Cemetery Ridge was very strong. General Lee determined that his troops should attack both the left and right of the Union lines as early as possible. Longstreet, the commander set to attack the Union left, did not have his men in place and ready to attack until 4 p.m. Both attacks were repulsed by the Union forces, but losses on both sides were very heavy. On the third day of fighting, Lee again attacked both the left and right sides of the Union line. However, after seven hours of intense fighting, Lee was forced to change his plans. He now instructed his commanders to attack the Union center, which would become famously known as Pickett's Charge. Seconds are centuries, minutes, ages. Men fire into each other's faces not five feet apart. There are bayonet thrusts, saber strokes, pistol shots, men going down on their hands and knees, spinning round like tops, throwing out their arms, gulping blood, falling, legless, armless, headless. There are ghastly heaps of dead men. Foot to foot, body to body, and man to man, they struggled and pushed and strived and killed. The mass of wounded and heaps of dead tangled their feet. And underneath the trampling mass, wounded men who could no longer stand fought, drowned in sweat, black with powder, red with blood. The Confederates were led by General Lewis A. Armstead. He stepped over the wall, waving his hat on his sword and seized a Union battery before he was shot down. All the Confederates who breached the wall were killed or captured. The Union line held. Pickett's charge had failed. Ending the Battle of Gettysburg. On the evening of July 4th, General Lee started his retreat back to Virginia. No Confederate army would invade the Union for the rest of the war. The Battle of Gettysburg still stands as the bloodiest battle in U.S. military history. 